Welcome everyone. I'm Shay with Curate Soul and I'm here to share with you our bhavana for the month of May. If you have been joining me um, recently, then you know that we are exploring the Purushartha, the four aims of mankind or the four desires of the soul. Uh, they're translated very similarly, but slightly different. Um, and so we opened the first quarter of the year exploring Dharma, which often is translated as purpose or responsibility, as well as cosmic order or alignment with nature. And last month, April, we began to move into the second Purushartha, which is Artha. And often Artha is translated as wealth, or tools or means of life. Um, also, it can be translated as support. So if you're just joining, I suggest going back at least to April's Bhavana chat to get a better idea and a grounding and a foundation in the idea of Arta. I'm going into a little more detail this month um, related to Ayurveda, yoga sister science. Uh, so if you kind of want to set the groundwork for Arta, the sec second Purushartha, feel free to kind of pause this video, uh, locate uh, April's Bhavana chat, and take a quick listen. So many of you know, if you've been with me for a while, that um, along with teaching and sharing yoga asana, I also share Ayurveda, yoga's sister science. And, Ayurveda's philosophy sees that all life, all matter, is a combination of the five elements of space, air, fire, water, and earth. And we are not separate from that. Humans are not separate from that. We're nature. We are made of the same stuff that uh, we see outside of us in the external world. But we often forget that we are connected, that we are a part of that. Um, as much as all of these modern technologies and systems are really beneficial and quite convenient for us. They actually create a layer of separation that takes us more and more away from our true nature. And what happens when that happens, when we forget our true nature, is the body and the mind tend to become riddled with illness, disease, discomfort, and so Ayurveda reminds us that we are connected to nature, that we are nature, that we're not separate from it, that we have cycles that need to be honored. Uh, for instance, a sleep and wake cycle. Cycles when uh, we're taking uh, in nourishment for food, we're not constantly eating all day long, but that we have certain periods that uh, work better with um, our body to take in uh, physical nourishment. And that uh, once again, that we're interconnected to all that is around us. So, you know, what we're experiencing, our lived experiences, emotions, uh, subtle energy are all affecting us, whether we realize it or not. And so being able to create some awareness around uh, the choices that we're making, the cycles and habits and tendencies, tendencies that we have or maybe don't have that keep us, um, maybe uh, that separation between us and our true nature, or maybe even those tendencies that bring us closer to that. So Ayurveda really is teaching us to kind of awaken and explore and to get curious about how we are living in alignment with nature Dharma, uh, which is our responsibility, is to remember that, to remember we're a part of nature. So how does that apply to Artha, the second Purushartha that we are um, exploring this kind of second quarter of the year? So um, Ayurveda itself is Artha. It's a tool. Uh, it can be considered a wealth of knowledge, a fountain of knowledge. Um, it can allow us and help us live the life that we desire. One of the things about Arta is, is um, tools or anything that helps us live in um, our dharma or our purpose or be in a state that we desire. And so it's what allows us to accomplish um, our dharma. And again, that's on an individual level as well as a collective level, because we do have responsibilities not only to ourselves, but the community around us and the world as well. And so what are the tools that we're using to do that? All right, so how does Ayurveda allow us to do that? 
So remembering that Ayurveda is a support system for our vitality, our life force. Ayurveda says that we are uh, experiencing imbalance anytime that we sense even the most subtle sensing that something's not quite right. That is our first sign that we are moving towards an imbalance, whether again, it's in mind, body, or spirit. It can be on a gross level. It can be on a very subtle level. That's all interconnected in, um, in according to Ayurveda. It's not separate. And so we're affecting all these layers, but Ayurveda can give us um, that remembrance that we're not separate from nature and that we can lean into those cycles and that wisdom to help create healing within ourselves. Ayurveda is also a system that, yes, certainly can treat symptoms, but more importantly, it's a system that keeps us symptom-free, that keeps us healthy, that keeps us vital. When we are living uh, in alignment with nature, with our cycles, then we are avoiding that imbalance or um, at least setting ourselves up to uh, not create an imbalance as quickly or as often or as easily, that we've actually created strength and vitality, um, an immune system that can handle whatever may come at it, um, a mind that even when the world throws us uh, a curveball, that we are still established within ourselves. We know that things will shift, uh, and that things are just temporary. So again, Ayurveda is Artha for our Dharma. It is a support system. It's tools for living in alignment with nature, living in alignment with our community, and living in alignment uh, with ourself, that divine aspect of self. So what are some of the ways that Ayurveda allows us to do this? Um, or what can we lean into? So one of my favorite things to suggest is eating seasonally. You know, the world is, uh, the nature is producing uh, what exactly it is that we need in those moments. So if we are able to go to a local farmer's market and see what's in season, what's growing locally, those are the foods that we really need to be um, uh, taking in at that time because those cycles in nature are then held in that food. That food is considered prana, prana being life force, that same life force within us. So we are needing to take in that life force to revitalize our own life force. And so even if we can't for some reason buy um, you know, the food that we see at the farmer's market, because yes, I do understand that often Food is a privilege in uh, certain areas and for certain people. If we can find those same foods, maybe at a local grocer instead, that works more in alignment with our budgeting uh, and our needs at that time, that is certainly an option. So um, making things work for you. Uh, just realizing where you can get an idea, like just seeing what's growing locally, what's in season. And then, you know, whether you purchase from the local farmer's market or if you have to purchase somewhere else, you are still eating uh, in accordance with nature, in alignment with cosmic order. Uh, something else is honoring our sleep and wake cycles. So how do we know what those are? Well, sleep and wake cycles are tied to sunrise and sunset. So waking up when the sun rises and going to bed when the sun sets. So that means this time of year, as the days are getting longer, we do have more time where we can spend awake. Uh, in the fall and winter months when the days are becoming shorter, then yes, we are meant to um, spend a little more time sleeping, resting, uh, rejuvenating the body and getting ready for the coming of spring and then summer. And so just once again, aligning ourselves with these cycles and realizing that we're not separate. One of the other things I like to offer are um, movement practices for the season. So as we are in springtime, which is called kapha season, kapha season, it's the elements of water and earth, which tend to be cool and heavy and dense, sticky and static. We want to bring in some of those opposite qualities. 
So some warmth, uh, some mobility, uh, some spaciousness. So things um, like vigorous exercise uh, this time of year is certainly indicated. Before it's getting too hot outside uh, and where we want to bring in some more cooling practices, we can do things that um, offer us uh, a little more intensity in what we are doing. Uh, if we practice yoga asana, things that create space in the body, so uh, big standing postures that are really expansive, lateral stretches when we're creating space through the side body, lengthening the spine through spinal extensions. These are all uh, great shapes, great ways to move the body that help remove any energy that may be sticky or stagnant or stuck. And as we begin to affect the physical body, we also begin to affect the subtle body. So we may find that we feel more spacious in our mind or that we may have more energy um, to go about our day, that we're not feeling quite so sluggish um, and that we can focus with more clarity. And so remembering it's all interconnected. I can share with you all of these teachings in a very linear, linear way, but really it's very hard to separate because this is not linear at all. These concepts are not linear at all. They are very intertwined in this web. Just like we are a part of the web, these teachings are a part of the web. And so as we are closing out this month with Ayurveda and Artha, just a couple questions for you to contemplate. How does or how can your yoga asana support you? How does it support um, the reason that you come to your mat? If you've been practicing yoga asana for a while, um, maybe you think back to what originally brought you to your mat. Was it that you just wanted to move your body? Was it some sort of um, injury healing that you wanted to, uh, to manage? Was it stress that you wanted to manage? Uh, some sort of uh, health related concern that you wanted to focus on. So whatever brought you to your mat, can you think back to that? And um, think about how you approached your practice and what in your practice, what tools were there to support you? So in yoga asana, yes, there is the movement of our physical body. That is one tool. Uh, some of the other tools that we use in yoga asana are our yoga mat or yoga blocks bolsters, straps, blankets, any sort of props that may lend uh, themselves to that support on a physical level, but also the support of our goal in yoga asana. And the same question can apply basically to anything. It doesn't have to be specifically yoga asana. If there's a practice or something that you're doing or have done, because you have a particular desire in mind or goal uh, or focus. What are the tools that you are using? Let's say you're an artist and you have an idea for a new painting. What are the tools that you're using? Uh, so yes, you have paintbrushes, you have paint, you have the canvas, but you also have the tools of your creativity. The exploration of putting paint on a canvas the creating of shapes, you have light to work with, uh, you have texture. So all of these are considered artha. Um, and so that's looking at it from kind of a, a very um, abstract <laughs> view, but we can really hone in on certain things in our life. What are the tools that we use to support ourselves? Artha is all, often considered uh, the material uh, possessions that we have, but we can look at it on uh, the immaterial or the intangible level as well. Um, I've mentioned in several of my yoga asana classes where we're doing uh, particular shapes that require uh, maybe some standing balancing on one leg or uh, strengthening through the shoulders, um, holding ourselves up uh, with our hands in something like plank, um, and so what else are we using other than the physical body, other than our bones, other than muscles, tissues, breath? We're also using that awareness, that curiosity, that idea of exploration, and maybe even courage and mental strength 
Um, you know, especially if we're new to a practice or new to that particular shape in our practice, it sometimes starts with meeting that fear or that resistance and then moving through that. And so that is a tool as well. That is arta. That is support. Our courage, our curiosity, our awareness, um, our breath. So, you know, we can really look at anything as a support or a tool. And depending on where we are in life and what we are experiencing and what our desires may be, those tools change and shift and they're meant to change and shift. They'll change for us depending on, uh, you know, the tools that I use now as a 40 year old woman are very different than I used uh, or needed as a 20 year old woman. And so understanding that this artha does change and will change and does shift. So to say that brings me back to this idea of yoga asana. You know, if you've been practicing for a while, have you noticed that your practice may have shifted? Or if it hasn't, are you feeling the need to change something? Because something in you has changed. Your desire has changed. Your goal has changed. And maybe to uphold that or work in alignment with that, something needs to shift in your practice. And again, I speak to yoga asana because I share yoga asana with people um, and community, but this can apply to anything. It doesn't have to be yoga asana. Um, it, you know, if something is speaking to you in your life right now, can you apply these same uh, questions and inquiry to that experience? Um, one other thing I would like to say in regards to Ayurveda and yoga asana uh, and Artha, all of this coming together. So choosing that practice that is supportive to us from an Ayurvedic standpoint, when we're creating uh, health and healing, what we do is we look to the opposite qualities. As I mentioned earlier, uh, we're in Kappa season. So these heavy, dense, stagnant, sticky, wet, cold qualities uh, we balance with those opposite qualities of warmth, mobility, spaciousness, uh, clarity, subtleness. And so this balancing with opposites is really important. We can do the same with yoga asana. So if we find ourselves um, having the goal of achieving um, a reduction in stress, calming the mind, uh, finding relaxation, it's not going to be recommended that we go into a hot power vinyasa class where we're doing a lot of arm balances or inversions because we have the same qualities of hot, really focusing the concentration, mobility, quite a lot of movement, challenge. And what we want to do is we want to bring in the opposite qualities. So for those of us that, we, that find that we're... Um, kind of uh, type A, that we really may be competitive, that we need to move a lot or feel like we need to move a lot to accomplish something or that we need to break a sweat. Uh, you know, it may be hard to move into that opposite practice, which would be something like yin yoga or restorative yoga, where we're actually lying on the ground uh, or closer to the ground. We have longer holds. We're not in a heated room. Um, we get to turn awareness inward and we're not necessarily challenging the mind and body with really um, uh, the types of poses that require like balancing on the hands or inverting ourselves. It doesn't mean that there's not challenge in holding stillness or in... Um, making a particular shape in our body, but it's a different sort of challenge. And so finding that ability to bring in the opposite qualities and yes, understand that resistance may be a part of that process, but to create health and to stay vital, then we need those opposite qualities. Like is just going to increase like. So if we're already feeling really agitated, anxious, hot, uh, sharp with our words, um, sharp with our temper, then we're not going to find any benefit going into classes or situations that bring those same qualities. Heat, sharpness, a focus, challenge, 
uh, mobility, requiring uh, lots of movement. We need to bring in those opposite qualities. So maybe take a moment to consider what it is that um, is really kind of present in your life right now and maybe creating some challenge. And you're looking for the antidote to that. So what is that antidote? It's going to most likely be the opposite qualities of what you're experiencing right now. So another example is if you're feeling uh, like you have a million things to do and you're running all over the place and you don't have time to uh, relax or focus on one task, then it is suggested that you really do bring in those types of qualities, more rest, more spaciousness, you know, where you're giving yourself 10 minutes for a particular task. What happens if you give yourself 30 minutes? Things like that. Um, you know, uh, one of my favorite things to share is yoga nidra, um, often translated as yogic sleep. And the difference between yogic sleep and the sleep when we fall asleep every night is that yogic sleep is conscious sleep, conscious rest, where when we fall asleep at night, it's unconscious. We are just totally knocked out. We're not aware of ourselves resting. And we certainly need that unconscious sleep, but because of our very modern lifestyle, uh, I always recommend and suggest yoga nidra because that allows us to be in a state of rest, a state of digest, a state of, um, you know, supporting our immune system, supporting our vitality and doing it with awareness, doing it consciously. Uh, quite different than sitting on the couch, checking out, and watching your favorite show. That's totally okay too. Nothing wrong with it. But what happens is the mind is still active and the body is still responding, whether we're aware of it or not. And so that's not really resting. So uh, yoga nidra is often practiced in a uh, supine position, so lying on your back, similar to shavasana. can be practiced in other shapes as well. And you can have somebody guide you or you can self-guide, but it's often equated to uh, meditation in that there's really nothing that you have to do at all uh, except lie there and just rest and receive. Um, and so if you're interested in yoga nidra, if you're new to it, uh, certainly leave me a comment, reach out. I'm happy to share with you some more information on that, or you can just do a couple uh, Google searches and read more about it for yourself. But it is a practice that I love to offer and share with others because it is incredibly healing. And it brings in a lot of those opposite qualities that we need, that Ayurveda suggests for creating health and vitality. And so it's medicine, it's balm, um, it is artha, it is a tool that uh, is incredibly beneficial. So I'll just close with saying that, um, you know, as we become aware of our current state and we learn to bring awareness to our current state, we are developing an incredibly important and useful tool to uh, support us, to support our vitality, to support our desires, our goals, and to support that remembrance of that place within us that knows and knows that it knows. So thank you for joining. I hope you enjoyed today's Bhavana chat. Uh, I am combining the newsletters this month and offering the Bhavana chat as well as the ritual and recipe, the playlist, upcoming events, and um, yeah, on upcoming events, June 20th, it's a Tuesday evening, Sarah and I are once again gathering for our um, summer solstice event. We will host this in person in Savannah as well as virtually. And we've got some fun, exciting, uh, and I think really wonderful um, changes, shifts to the way that we're sharing. We are going to offer more embodied ritual next gathering. And so you'll still have your PDF that will uh, give you uh, a recipe, particular rituals that you can do on your own for the actual solstice uh, on the morning of the 21st. But what we wanted to do was come together 
and really kind of embody uh, the energy of the summer solstice. So I'll be sharing Yoga Nidra um, during that time together, and uh, Sarah's going to lead us through a beautiful ritual. More details to come. We will be asking you to uh, bring a couple things if you would like, just to support the actual uh, ritual. Uh, but know that they're always an option as well. And then in the autumn, the last weekend of October, I've been invited to join Rachel for her um, retreat on Tidy Island. I will be sharing Ayurveda and then cooking dinners for everyone that's joining, as well as um, uh, offering kind of a, a cooking class. Very simple, though, nothing, nothing too in-depth, but just the uh, time together to cook uh, in community, nourish ourselves and, and each other in community. And so uh, more information is included in the newsletter about both of the upcoming events. And I hope that you will join me. All right. Thank you so much. Great to have you. And I'll see you next month.